So, welcome back to another Game Stuff episode. And this stuff has been building up for the last few months. I can finally talk about it. And there is a lot to talk about. So, let me just start at the beginning. Now, this game I picked up last year. The original Destiny. And I was playing it with some friends and to be honest with you, I hit level 20 and then it was the whole light system and I I just got turned off. I just thought it was kind of ridiculous. I couldn't gain levels anymore. It was all about light and I don't know. I just It just killed the game for me. And that was it. That was the end of Destiny. Until I my friend Andrew came over from California and we're like, why don't we play a game together? And I'm like, well, you know, I really haven't messed around enough with Destiny and he'd bought it too and he'd put it away. So we started playing together and we started having a really good time because we were casually playing it and then we were gaining, you know, items with light on there and we we're getting, you know, gaining higher uh, levels in that regard and we really were having fun. So we got addicted to Destiny. That's kind of what happened and had to pick up Destiny the Taken King. And I tell you, I there was this is a while ago I was playing this now, but me and my friend Andrew were playing nearly every single night, uh, along with my friend Randy, and we were just casually playing the game and having a real blast. And you know the funny thing is, it didn't matter about light again, and, and it didn't matter about levels. Like I hit level 40 almost instantaneously in a couple of days. And what I found about Destiny is, it's more about hanging out with your friends and having a good time. And that's what I've enjoyed about it. Just, you know, going through the new levels. And I tell you, the one thing about Destiny that I can give it, the graphics are unbelievable. They really, really are. And seeing some of the new maps, some of the new levels, they are a sight to behold. So, have I got my money's worth out of Destiny? Strangely, yes, I have. I, I really have. And I am not done with Destiny at all. There is so much content I haven't even done. Of course you can go like super higher beyond level 40 uh, in light again. So yeah, the game is not over for a long time, but there's a lot of other games I'm playing right now. So I will come back to Destiny in time, but so far having a really, really good time with it. Now I gambled and I, I don't really like to gamble sometimes with video gaming because it can, as we know, it can burn you. But this gamble has paid off and it's unusual. Tales of Zestaria. Yes. I am always complaining to Kim. I'm like, man, there's not enough RPGs out. I'm like, God damn it, God damn it. And all of a sudden we find out about this game. And she's like, why don't you get it? And I'm like, yeah, you know, and here's my history. And I, I, I'm not being a negative guy in any regards. I, I'm not a fanboy uh, in a negative way against the Tales series. I've never minded the Tales series. I really, I've never really minded it. I played the first Tales of Destiny back on the PS1 and I liked it. I did. And over the years, more and more and more and more came out and I kind of got kind of lost in it all. And I just, I kind of was, I kind of blacklisted it saying, oh, it's just an, an RPG series that I can't get to type of thing. I was looking at it that way, but wow, I, I put this in and there's a few things that always get me. I hate starting an RPG and there's tons of cinematics, tons of writing, and I can't get into the game right away. I know that's kind of a, a weird way to, uh, to judge a game, but I like to get into a game right away. And Tales of Zestaria, boom, I'm right in. Some ruins, you know, I'm there with a, another character. We're going through. I'm loving that. Like, we start the game right away. Boom, the next thing. This is also a thing I judge on a lot is combat. Combat, I can't stand long, you know, swirling bits and you're waiting for combat, you're looking at the ceiling and then you go in combat and you're moving your characters and I'm kind of the time in my life where I like fast combat. Actually, I've always liked fast combat. I thought Grandia was a, like, when I played that, I was like, wow, look at that, this combat is super fast and I always wanted all combat to be that fast after that. And Tails again here, Combat is super fast. I couldn't believe how fast it was. We were in combat, killing the enemies, boom, we were done. Back to, you know, wandering around the exploration screen. And I was like, God damn it. So I'm into the game right away. The combat's super fast. The story's interesting. Character designs, you know, they're classic. Um, you know, they don't blow my mind by any means, but they're, they're good. I'm not gonna fucking come down in this game. The you know, the art in the game is really nice. I'm, I'm running around and at one point I look at Kim and I'm like, 
why haven't I been playing more Tales of games? I'm like, I just, I, it's just one of those things that there's been so many of them. And I just, I may have got jaded. And I, I don't think that the Tales series deserves to be jaded for me any longer. I think I've made a, a great mistake and I've made a, a wonderful purchase. And I can't wait to get back to this game. I'm only about three hours in. But from what I've seen and what I've experienced so far, even the music is really good. I like the game. I like the game. It's, I, I, I'm asking for fucking RPGs all the time. They give me one. And I'm, what am I going to do? Not do it? Jesus Christ. I can't complain about things when people are giving me things. So, high recommendation for this. If you're looking for a good JRPG, they're here. It's here. It's this one. Tales of Zestaria. You won't be disappointed. Okay, so... Metal Gear, yes, I, I finished Metal Gear and it's a flawed game in a lot of ways. I love the game, but it's flawed. It feels like Kojima and Konami after level, you know, like uh, level 31, it all fell apart. The storyline did, it, you know, up to that point we were going some direction. There's a lot of repetition in the game, but overall I really liked the game. I did. And I'm very nostalgic. I think I've said that in, in the, the Metal Gear review that I did that this is, to me, the last Metal Gear game. Unless they get Kojima back, which I highly doubt. And they're talking about it. They're talking about doing another Metal Gear game at Konami. That's part of the rumor going around. I'm like, really? After all of what happened with Five, you're thinking about doing another one? Of course, because it sold well. <sighs> Anyways, here it is. The Phantom Pain Collector's Edition. And... Like most of the collector's edition for uh, my p past Metal Gear games, I'm kind of weird with these ones. I don't like to open them up. I like to keep this sealed. I really want to keep this one sealed. Uh, it, to me, this is the last real Metal Gear game. And the collector's editions, I always get for Metal Gear. I I really do. I'm, I'm winding down with collector's editions now. I'm trying to stay away from them as much as I can because the, who has that much room for all these things, you know, as well? It's like... You start running out of room after a while, and you're like, it's about importance. It's really about importance, and this is a really important collector's edition, and man, do I want to open it up. I, I want to see the robotic arm and make it do this, like everybody else has been doing in all their photos. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so happy. This got delayed for me. This was delayed by weeks for me to get it, so I had to purchase the game digitally, another thing that I, I normally don't do. But uh, I had to, had, to, had to grab this, and very happy to have Metal Gear the Collector's Edition. I... The end of an era, that's for sure. And, and this is something that I haven't done for a very long time. I was saying to a friend of mine, like, what I used to do with, you know, when a game would come out back in the old days, I'd buy the game and I'd always buy the strategy guide. And I wouldn't buy the strategy guide necessarily because I needed it. It felt like a little package, a little fun package. I'd buy the game and I'd buy the book uh, with it. And it just felt like there's some fun package and I, I, I could enjoy both of us looking at the artwork in, in the book and all that kinds of stuff. So I haven't bought a strategy guide in a long time. And I bought this one. The Metal Gear, The Phantom Pain, uh, the complete official guide collector's edition. So it's hardcover. It's hardcover. It's right here. And I had to pick this up. I, I haven't picked up a strategy guide in a goddamn long time. I was like, whoa, I haven't... Even when it arrived, I was like, I haven't got, I haven't got this for so long. So I had to get the hardcover version, just because it's so damn collectible and cool, and the end of an era, as I say. Yeah, and <laughs> I had to I had to go to eBay, and I had to go to Hong Kong, and I had to get my own Diamond Dog shirt. I had to get a Diamond Dog shirt. It's just too classic. You know, there's Foxhound, we got Diamond Dogs. Too fantastic. I, I wore this down to Portland, and I think everybody thought I was a, a complete weirdo. But, uh, you know, another thing I didn't know, and call me stupid for not knowing this, but Diamond Dogs, I didn't realize it was a David Bowie song. I, I didn't know that. I was looking up some David Bowie songs purely randomly, and I see Diamond Dogs, I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> I, like, I like the way all this stuff is relating. I, I did not know that, but... Oh, I should mention another game uh, I picked up when I came back. I couldn't find it in stores in Canada. It was sold out, and I had to get a digital copy. And that is the brand new Transformers game. Love. Absolute love for this game. 
First of all, by Platinum, a company I adore. I absolutely adore. I really have loved all their games. Bayonetta, you know, Revengeance, and the list goes on. But, uh, you know, Vanquish, I won't even go on about that. But, wow. Them getting the Transformers license was just unbelievable. Like, I've seen people tackling the Transformers licenses before, and they've gotten it kind of right somewhat. This is a G1 Transformers love fest. It really is unbelievable. The, you know what gets me about the 80s cartoons? The coloring, the shading. I go on about it a lot, but you'll see on any of the given models that a blue color will not just be blue, it'll be like three shades of blue uh, for, for the, the shading, for the coloring, for the lighting effect of it all. And that, I miss shading like that. You don't see shading like that in a lot of newer uh, cartoons or anime. I think cause it's really expensive to do nowadays, but it works incredibly well. The gameplay is really fun, really intuitive. It's just, you start playing it and you're just doing combos, smashing things, and you're having a good time. And that's a game I, I hear it's very short, I'm a couple hours in, loving it, I will get back to it. Now, when I was at ANC Games in the summer in Toronto, I got to meet up with a really great YouTuber called Star Soldier One, Ryan Gino. Really great guy, I've known him since the very beginnings of my YouTube career back in like, I think 2008, and he was already there, you know? And he has a huge collection of NES games and stuff like that, where just recently, he decided to sell his entire collection and I gotta say, a big thank you to Ryan. He was selling these games and just giving the best deals. He, uh, I gotta show you the games I picked up off him. It's just unbelievable. A game that I've wanted for a long time. It's so weird. I thought I had this in my collection and I don't. I've got the first Castlevania game. For some reason, I thought I had this. And I went and looking, I'm like, I don't have this. I noticed he was selling it. Castlevania 2. A game I I adore, a game from my childhood, a game that my friend Andrew lent to me and I played repeatedly until I got frustrated in what to do next. And then we had to, I, he had called Nintendo Power, I got the secret off him, how to beat the game, but this game really means a lot. This game, I always remember it sitting by the NES while we were playing it back in the day and always looking at the artwork. And here's something, I'm gonna give you something, Simon's Quest. The artwork, you know, we got, you know, Dracula in the back. But, what's really funny about this, look at the similarities from this cover to Ravenloft, a Dungeons and Dragons module, a classic Dungeons and Dragons module. They're almost identically the same. I'm sure other people have, have noticed that, but I kept saying to myself, I want to talk about that in an episode because I had the Ravenloft uh, module in the other room and it's so funny how similar it is. Uh, I, I think these guys were a little were a little bit more influenced by this. I think so. I think because that module, God, I think that module came out in 1986, 87. It might even be earlier. Hell, for all I know. But somebody ripped off somebody. That's all I know. But I want to thank Ryan for giving me Simon's Quest. This is a, a mint in box, perfect copy of the game. Wow, this was one for the NES uh, memory bank uh, and for the collection on the shelf. I was like, wow. I've got Simon's Quest now. Now, I don't know if any of you saw a video that I did called, you know, my weird Nintendo story about a friend of mine back in 1987-88 who lent me a whole bunch of his Nintendo collection. And I was playing it, I thought it was great. I came home from school one day and they were all gone. And he, what he did is he stole them off me to, uh, to rent to a friend of his and then he told me that they were stolen, that, you know, I thought they were stolen. So he, he made me pay, pay back him it's a crazy story. Go check out my video on it. So yeah, what a fucking asshole he was. But one of the games he introduced me to in that collection, a game that I was playing religiously, and I've looked on eBay and I've never seen a great looking copy of it. And that is Kid Nicky, Radical Ninja. Look at this copy of it. Look at this beautiful copy of it. Ryan just was meticulous about looking after his games. And I was like, oh my God. I said, Ryan, can I get Kid Nicky of you? He's like, yeah. And I, I offered him a price and he's like, oh my God, sure, man. And it was a, like, I, I don't want to tell you the price that we went for, but they were really, really good. Like I, 
Ryan really did me a number with this one for sure. So I just want to thank Ryan again for giving me some real childhood memories. And I, I told him, I said, I want you to know that they are really going to a good home, that these games really mean something to me. They're not just games. You know what I mean? They, they really have a, a hold in my childhood. The good, the bad, and the ugly. That asshole who ripped me off back in the day. This is also, uh, somebody sent me some things here. And as, I don't know if you guys know, but I took my P.O. box down. I, I don't, I didn't want anybody sending me any more video games or anything like that. I, I don't want to accept anything from anybody. It's just the way I am. I, I feel too bad about it. But once in a while, somebody will write to me and say, Hey, do you mind if I send you something? Like, a, it's, you know, something I think you'll appreciate. And I'm like, no. And they're like, can I please? And I'm like, no, please don't. It makes me feel too bad. And then they send it to me anyways. They pressure me in, but I just had to, th this arrived and I just, this, 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 this meant something to me. It really, really did. The Lords of Thunder on VHS. The Lords of Thunder in VHS. Let me say that I just started the Lords of Thunder podcast. We're about eight episodes in right now. I'm doing the podcast with Alpha Mega Sin. And Jimbo at the Retro Gaming Lounge sent me this. And it's an original promo for the original Lords of Thunder. And... I, I gotta say, Jimbo, I, I really want to thank you for sending me this. It really, it really meant a lot, especially starting the new podcast. Uh, we're really enjoying it, and it was so nice to get a promo cool item like this. And this really meant something. It really, really did. And I'll definitely continue to do the podcast. But I want to thank uh, Jimbo for this. He also sent this. Look at this. Look at this. The official Topographic 16 Game Encyclopedia. Now, I have a lot of like tips and tricks books that look like this from back in the day for the Turbo Graphics. I did not have this book. And uh, I had a little note in here, something I wanted to show. This is funny. <laughs> so, as you guys know, one of, my, one of the games I hate the most in life is Double Dungeons. It's one of the ones holding up my shelf here. It's classic. And they have it in here. And they have a mini review of it. And I wanted to, to show you guys uh, the way they, they, they rate this. So, uh, difficulty and challenging. Okay. So, graphics, out of a 1 to 10, they gave it a 7. Duh. I can kind of see that I would have given it a 6 back in the day. Back in the day. Not now. Response. I'm, I'm guessing this means responsive gameplay. Responsive gameplay. Kind of, the game does what it's, it's supposed to be doing. They gave it a 6. Hey, I can buy that. I'll give it a 6 too. Sound. Now, they decided to change the rating here. The sound they give from a 1 to 5. They give it a 3. I give it about... I give it a 3 for nostalgia too. But it's leaning on a 2. Let me say. Fun. Fun. The amount of fun and entertainment you're having while playing Double Dungeons in the Turbo Graphics. Fun out of 1 to 10. They gave it a 6. Well, aren't they motherfucking generous? Uh, ultimate, the ultimate score is 22. I don't know what the fuck that means, but I, I'm going by fun. So, no, I'd give the fun factor maybe a three or four. I'll be generous and say 4.5 today, really. But I thought it was funny. I, it's funny to go back and look at all the Turbo Graphics games that they have listed in here and read some of the scores. The first game I looked up was Double Dungeons. I had to see what they'd have to say about that. So All right, uh, a few other things that... Uh, when I was down in Portland, some people uh, gave to me, one girl came, came up and gave me this, and she'd stitched this. A girl called Cassie, she'd stitched this. And she's like, I'm a big fan of the show, so I had to make this Earthbound uh, cross stitch for you. I've seen just about every video you put up. Uh, one of my favorite things is to hear you, 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 you hear your crazy nostalgic stories. Looking forward to hearing more in the future, Cassie. I just want to say thank you, Cassie, so much. I really, really appreciate this. I'll, I'll be putting up a putting it up on the shelf uh, someplace. I'll, I'll find a place for it. Absolutely. But I, I just want to say that I really appreciate you taking the time to cross-stitch this. This is great. Look at those Earthbound characters. Really great. Now, every single year, I see Ryan King down at a convention somewhere, and he is always so nice. He comes up to me, and he always gives me some Dragon Quest memorabilia that he got at PAX, uh, usually. And this is a cool one. <laughs> this is for Dragon Quest Heroes. I don't know if this is like a glory hole here or what the hell. I, I, I don't know what this is for. Maybe it's like a, somebody's going to say, Johnny, I can't believe you don't know what this is for. It's a nose holder. I don't know what this is, but I think it's really, really cool. Does it say on it? No, it doesn't. 
And also, he got me this Dragon Quest II uh, Monsters Joker book. This uh, field guidebook. And it's got all the creatures in there. Oh, oh that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, it's just a, a Sly Fox a Polaris card in here with some Dragon Quest characters on it. Thank you, Ryan. I really appreciate it, man. I, I always feel so bad when you come up to me and give me this stuff, but I just wanted to say thank you. And, jeez. Uh, people are really nice. I gotta say, like, I just can't say how nice people are. Uh, I, when me and Alpha were doing, uh, after, after we did our panel, I, a great guy called Kenny came up to me and he's like, because I saw in one of your episodes that you were really getting into image comics. I'm like, yeah. I said, I love them. I said, I love the sci-fi stories. He's like, here. He goes, I've read these. He goes, I love them. He says, I want you to read them because I think they're really that good. And uh, this, one of them is Black Science and the other is Copperhead. And he, he couldn't praise them enough. He really sat and talked to me for quite some time telling me how great they were. And uh, I've looked through them and the artwork is just awesome. So, uh, Kenny, I want to say thank you so much. And... Hey, I'll never forget that beer and talk that we had about Transformers the Animated Movie. That show was a lot of fun, so thank you. And yeah, I might as well get it out of the way that somebody wrote to me on the show and uh, they just went by the name of Frank. And they said, listen, I know you're a big fan of Macross. I'm going down to the Macross convention. Uh, they, they have a Macross convention in California. Look at this. He sent me this Macross World Convention shirt. and. I, I got a little teary-eyed when I got it. I was like, I got it because I've always wanted to go to like the Macros World Convention. It's a it's a, it's just a show for the great animated show, uh, Japan, you know, uh, Japanese animated show Macros out of Japan. I've always been such a fan of it. They always have a convention every year. I can't justify going down for one day. It's not a huge convention as well. It's not a huge one. I think it's getting bigger year after year. But uh, I, I couldn't believe it. He sent me this. Macros World shirt and it sounds cheesy, but I felt like I was a part of it somehow now and I I just had to wear the shirt and I I, I know by you know you I know you go by the name of Frank But I I want to thank you for this. I really really appreciate it and he sent something else and Small tear I guess small tear from this one. I really really did Marie Ajima She is the voice actress for Minmei uh, Lin Minmei in in Macross the Japanese version and uh, I and she does all the singing, like some of the great songs over the years, you know, the the early years of Macross from 1982 to 84. I I've adored her music, and I I have all of her CDs, and I just I just love her to death. I I think she's just amazing. So he sent me this concert tour book, but while he was at the Macross convention, he got her to sign it to me, right here to Johnny Marie, and I was just like. Oh my god, like that. It's so funny, I know you don't know, but I got like, I got a Macross poster up here with Minmei and Hikaru up here, and I got a Minmei in my, uh, in the, the spare bedroom over here uh, poster up there, and I, I've always been such a fan, and man, I, I can tell you, you know, I, one thing I want to say, and I really, really want to say this is that it really restores my faith in humanity for being good people. Uh, it makes me want to be makes me want to be a better person. Uh, some of the generosity of people out there and some of the thoughtfulness of people out there it kind of it really hits me here. And I I just wanted to say that I don't take any of this stuff for, for granted that any of you guys send me. It all really means something because you're being so thoughtful by sending it to me, and I I really appreciate it. I really do. So, uh, our last few things, you know, we were just talking about anime. When I'd watched Macross back in the day, I'd heard about another show. Uh, this is in, in 85, I'd heard about this. Another show called Orgus, that most of the cast and crew went on to working on Orgus right after Macross. And it was called like the Super Dimension Century uh, Orgus. And I was just like, what is this show about? And I, I had the toys over the years. Uh, I've had a, new, a, a bunch of books over the years. I've seen it, so much stuff on it, but I've never watched the animated show. And I've always wanted to because it's part of that generation of anime that I love so much. Yes, the old school generation of anime that I love so much. And I I finally picked it up. 
Disc Attack, a, a great company that's releasing a lot of great anime and updating it and uh, releasing it on DVD again. Uh, they just finally got Orgus here. Now, Orgus came out, oh god, I don't know how many years ago, maybe about 10-ish plus years ago by this other company, but you could only get it through their site. It was really, at the time, it was really wishy-washy. I, I didn't trust it, so I never got it. So it was really nice that they released this version now. I just started watching the series, and it's it's holding up really, really well. It really, it is. I, I love seeing old school anime again, and I can sit for hours and watch this stuff. And I just love the the animation back then, the animation style, the character designs by my favorite character designer. I wish he would come back to Macross, but that's another story. But so far, really loving Orgus, and it's a honestly like we're talking like nearly 25 years later. I finally get to watch Orgus after all this time and it's not it's it's, it's 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 and it's not disappointing at all now this is the last thing the last thing i picked up and i got it for like ten dollars off ebay i was remembering back to 1983 yeah just before return of the jedi came out yeah just before then and my dad took me down to a to a local store that had a bunch of magazines and i i looked up and i saw this poster book and I bought it and it was $1.95 and it was all about Return of the Jedi and all inside was posters. You can fold it out. It was like posters on everything. And I, I read this inside out and it really meant a lot to me. And I was reading this just before the movie came out. It was just before the movie came out. So, I, of course, it's been so many years, but I always remember this in my memory. And I, I've lost my old copy. I lost that. God, back in the early early 90s. So really nostalgic to be pick this up again, and uh, it was really great to see you know Han Solo on the back. And remember remembering what I thought you know as a kid uh, of my love for Star Wars and the excitement of Return of the Jedi coming out. I know because we got the Force Awakens coming out, so it kind of was re, re you know reawakening reawakening some of that love again for Star Wars. So. Guys, I've got to at the end of another Game Stuff episode. I, I'll probably do one late after Christmas. And uh, I just want to say, anyways, guys, until next time.